Hi, I'm Dominic Benner. Thanks for watching Dominic's Woodworks. Today I'm making table cards, or whatever you call these things, where you write the name of a person on it, put them at their place, the table, so they know where to sit. The thing is, those I made were for the birthday of a friend, and I already had to ship them, so I don't have any left to show you. I do have pictures, I do have video of the process, but for the finished piece I can only give you a dramatization. So before I got down to the shop, I did some work at the computer. And this is what I did. I searched for an image, side view of a car, a BMW in this case, but that's due to preference of this friend. Anyway, I took the image and imported it into Inkscape. I don't have any videos of that. I think there are enough tutorials out there, but if I'm wrong, just say so in the comments. Anyway, Inkscape has a function to trace images, non-vector images, which gave me the outline and all the, well, all the stuff on the inside. I broke this apart and reunited all those, meaning I took all the shapes that it traced and added them up to one, which resulted in the in the outside. I don't know if I'm explaining this right or understandable, but if you want, want more details, just say so. I took the shape. First thing I actually did was to uh, put it I think, seven or eight times on the same page and scale it to different sizes, print it out and check which works best. This is what this is the result of that process, but it's a pretty much a personal choice. And I printed out the the winner, the shape, and used my whether these thick slides you can see those in the video. And let me show you. I glued the templates to the slide using spray adhesive. Then I took the piece over to the bandsaw to cut it out along the lines. I tried not to cross the line, obviously. I also tried to use the blade to dig out the over at my sander as smooth over the cuts and I uh, didn't rely on the, the angle of the band. I just made sure that every side was flat. Using a sanding drum in my drill press, I improvised a thickness sander and I used it to to sand the, the cars flush. Also, I just realized I missed a step. I took them over to the bandsaw where I, well, I practically resort the pieces, setting the fence to, I think, about seven or eight millimeters and put the the sanded pieces through. I kept sanding them until both sides were smooth and I'll make a video about my improvised drum sander at some point in the future. I sanded over the edges with 120 grit sandpaper to make them more pleasant to the touch. And then something terrible happened. On the workbench I had these a uh, container with rust liquid leaked and did some nice coloring job. I managed to send most of it away though. Next step, and I don't have any video of this, is putting the names on the cards. There are several methods of putting ink onto wood. The most famous one seems to be the one by Steve Ramsey, the inkjet transfer, and I tried that with mixed results. The thing is, the ink on the on the sheet would form little drops, thus giving the the result a spotty look. Well, I think it's a it's a look that c could be used, but in this case, it's not what I wanted. One thing I discovered was that I could use the 
these sheets used for overhead projectors. The ones I have have one side coated with a with something to hold the ink. So I print it on the other side and it worked pretty much as advertised. The thing is, apparently it does dry on the other side rather quickly as compared to the adhesive backing paper. But it allows you to see what you are transferring and gives you better ways to align it. It was my main beef with the or the main theoretical beef with the adhesive paper, aside from the spotty looks, that I would have a hard time aligning it with with this to get the, the name even and centered. The next thing I checked out was the method by Jay Bates, the heat transfer of toner, i.e. laser printer. The thing is, I don't have a wood burning stick or iron or whatever you call those with a flat tip. I do have one, but it's more like a soldering iron. I think there are replacement tips, but I, I couldn't find them. So what I did was I cut out the, the name, used adhesive tape, in the ends making sure that the tape wasn't covering any part of the name. I should mention I printed them out in a, as a mirror image. Then after gluing this here and making sure it was aligned, I used this soldering iron with a flat tip, not broader than your average screwdriver, and I started, well, I started experimenting. The end result is that I found the best process for me was to do every single letter and to move the tip, to keep it moving, but to stay on that letter till the paper turned yellow. This gave me a pretty decent result. I'll show you pictures. Well, I think I have one picture. And the only problem was that I didn't really invest much time in sanding, so I didn't get a really solid, solid letters, but there were, the, were these tiny lines in between the sanding where the toner didn't get to the wood. To make the feet, I first stripped one of my beloved slats in half at the table saw. Next I use a table saw slat for making 60 degree angles in order to cut the legs. I have such a slat from making wooden snowflakes last Christmas and I put links to the videos in the description detailing those snowflakes if you're interested. There's one from Steve Ramsey and one from this woodworks. In order to make the process easily repeatable I took a scrap piece, a, a test piece from earlier and screwed it onto the slat so to act as a, as a depth stop and this way I could use it to to align the, the slat and I had to turn it upside down with every cut so that both angles are at the same side but in this the the angle depth stop was great help too. Uh, these little legs made. I just used hot glue, glued them together, and I did that on a flat surface. Put the hot glue on, pressed it against it, and held it in a way that both wheels and leg would align. After gluing together all the pieces, I have put them outside on a piece of cardboard and used my HVLP system to spray them with. Oh, basically with a stain. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. You can adapt this to any shape you want. You could even go overboard and use more expensive wood or well, I guess you could even do some inlays with this. Simple inlays by drilling a hole and putting pieces of dowel in it. And last but not least, the image I promised you one of the finished pieces. Thanks for watching Dominic's Woodworks. Please comment, like and subscribe. To keep up to date, check out my blog at dominicswoodworks.com and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Google+, Instagram and Geek. 
all the links in the description.